I am Anil Kumar and in this series of pre-calculus, we will take a few examples which will help us perform better in calculus. Let me first thank one of my students who has just finished advanced functions, final exam and who came to deliver me this beautiful card. Now we have many things in common, both of us love nature. Uh, I really appreciate all my students for their hard work and they trust in me. Now, he's an amazing student. He took off one summer just to get trained to catch cobras in South India. He loves nature and I hope he'll be doing very well one day. Well, let's get back to our pre-calculus session. So as I was saying, there are a few topics which you should know before starting calculus. You should know factoring, rationalization, equation of tangent line, advanced functions, rate of change for different functions, word problems like expressing situations as an equation relating to or more variables, working with combination, composition of functions. So I'll be repeating these things in my video so that you don't forget them. And in this particular video, I've taken a few examples on factoring. I have hundreds of videos on factoring for you to practice but here are four very typical examples. Uh, they will give you a guideline on what type of factoring uh, you should practice for, right? You can always pause your video, copy these questions, try them out and then look into my suggestions. So the four examples are x squared minus y squared plus 1 plus 2x then we have x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared. Then we have x to the power of 4 plus 5x squared plus 9. And the last one here is 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 1. Let me tell you that this one which we have here is unfactorable. But we have a technique of factoring this and these techniques will really help you in calculus. And the last one here, uh, you need to use uh, what you learn, polynomial division. Correct? So that's the variety which we have. Now let me do the first one, uh, which is this one here, which is very simple. Uh, x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared. It looks difficult. But I hope you remember the formula, a plus b whole square. It could be applied directly. Think about it. You could write this as x plus 1 over x whole square. So sometimes the questions could be tricky but easy. So you may have to look at a problem from different angles and analyze and get to the result, right? So that's the emphasis of uh, this particular example here. Now we have done the trinomial using the formula and now we'll, doing, we'll do this one in the next part. So I just copied these questions. You can actually solve them and then look into my solution. So let's see how to factor x squared minus y squared plus 1 plus 2x. You see this minus y squared and all these three terms could be treated as a trinomial. So, what I will do here is I will rewrite this question. Let me just copy it first as x squared minus y squared plus 1 plus 2x. That's the question. So, I will rewrite this as x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus y squared. Now, first three terms become a perfect square which could be written as x plus 1 whole square, right? And we have minus y squared. Got it? Now you can apply difference of squares. I hope you remember a squared minus b squared is equals to a plus b times a minus b, right? So we could write this as x plus 1 minus y or plus y times x plus 1 minus y. So that is how we can factor it, right? Now we used another formula to factor this one which was, as you know, a plus b whole square is equal to 
a square plus 2ab plus b square which we applied in the very first question also right so that's not difficult at all these are simple just to get you started now here comes the real one now this is classified under unfactorable the reason is what why do we say that this is unfactorable we say it is unfactorable because we are looking for two numbers whose product should be 9 correct and whose sum should be 5 we don't have 9 you could get 9 times 1 but sum is not 5 you could get 3 times 3 but the sum is not 5 so that makes it unfactorable now the question is we need to factor it how can we do it so the question given to us is x to the power of 4 plus 5x square plus 9. So we adopt a method which is kind of completing squares. Like kind of. Let me write down here. Kind of completing squares. Does that give you a hint? So what we will do here is we'll try to make a perfect square here. 9 is 3 square, right? 9 is 3 square. So, so if I make 6 here, then yes, I can do something, correct? Right? So what I will do here is that I will add 1x square and also subtract 1x square. Do you see that part? So what I did was that I added and subtracted x square. It helped me to form a trinomial x to the power of 4, 6x squared plus 9, which can be factored as a perfect square. Do you see that? So what we made here, we made a trinomial, which is a perfect square. Correct? Now we can write this as x squared plus 3 whole square. So this trinomial can be written like that and we have minus x square. Do you get it? Perfect. If you expand this, what you get is that trinomial. Now we'll apply difference of squares. Beautiful. So we'll apply different of squares. We get x square plus 3 plus x times x square plus 3 minus x. That's it. Well, at the most, we can rearrange x squared plus x plus 3 times x squared minus x plus 3. Do you get an idea? So, there is a technique of factoring unfactorable which you should know before getting into calculus. So, that's a huge technique. The examples which I have taken in this series are actually very good. For general questions, I have hundreds of videos on factoring. You can always search Anil Kumar factor this, this, this playlist. You will get to know many examples. Okay. Now here is the last one. We'll look into polynomials division. Now we have a cubic equation here. Now how to factor a polynomial? I've taken a very simple example. Uh, now... The possible factors are plus minus 1, which are factors of these, the constant, or factors of 1 divided by factors of 2. That gives us plus minus half also, right? So these are the possible factors. So we'll now apply the factor theorem. That is to say, if I plug in a number, let's say if we find p of 1, so if I substitute 1 here, what do I get? I get 2 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1. It is not equal to 0, right? We are looking for something which could give us 0. Well, let's apply half. So if I write half here, I get 2 times half q plus half square plus half minus 1. That is 2 times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2 minus 1, which is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus half minus 1. 
and that is zero. That is zero. So this simply means that half is a factor. I mean, x minus half is a factor, correct? So once you know that x minus half is a factor, you could divide the whole expression and get it to quadratic equation, which can be factored. You get an idea, right? So we could do that, right? So basically, we know that we could divide this expression, 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 1 by x minus half and get a quotient here and our answer, right? So you could do this division, get your answer. Now, you could do long division or you could do synthetic division. Perfect. These are the techniques which we have learned in advanced functions. You have to be good at it. Now, uh, let me show you doing synthetic division and further solving this particular question, right? Since I want to really take up a few things and remind you of what you should be learning uh, to get to this stage, right? So what, how do we do synthetic division? We take these coefficients. The coefficients are 2, 1, 1, and minus 1. And the number which makes this 0 is half. We'll take half here, right? And, uh, and then, then we just bring the numbers down. So we'll just bring down, down number 2, write it here. Multiply half by 2, you get 1 right you get one half times two right it there add them so what you're doing here is you add these numbers but here you multiply times and then write it well one plus one is two half times two is again one so one plus one is two half times two is again one however now you get zero zero is your remainder correct it has to be since it is a factor so so i could write uh, 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 1 as equal to one of the factors half x minus half times this is what this is 2x squared these are coefficients right 2x squared plus 2x plus 2 we can take 2 common right so if you take 2 common you get 2x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 so that becomes your answer. So that is how you could factor the cubic equation. Now, with this, you got some flavor of factoring now. You know product and sum, you know difference of squares, you know perfect squares, and you have learned how to factor unfactorable, that is huge, and simple polynomial factoring by long division or synthetic division. With that, we close this video and we'll take up the next topic. I hope you are enjoying this process and without wasting much time you know exactly what to work on to get ready for calculus. Thank you and all the best.